Pakistan is the most favored nation for India, but it's also India's arch enemy. Since the attack in Uri in the state of Jammu and Kashmir, India has been mulling options to get back to Pakistan. One option on the table, withdraw the MFN status. But would that hurt Pakistan economically or is it just a symbolic move? Vrinda, my colleague, filed this report. As tension continues to mount between India and Pakistan, India plans to look at non-military ways to deal with its neighbour. India plans to review the MFN or Most Favoured Nation status given to Pakistan. Now, the question is, will this impact Pakistan or is this purely symbolic? Despite India reducing levies for Pakistan under the MFN status, India still has trade surplus or more than $1 billion of trade. The informal trade between the two countries, that is India and Pakistan, is twice that of its normal trade. And the informal trade usually takes place via the countries like Dubai. The route via Dubai is almost three times more efficient than that of the straight route between Delhi and Lahore. Bribes, custom checks and physical examination of goods with the Delhi-Lahore route makes this less efficient than the Dubai route. With the military option ruled out and withdrawal of the MFN status being only for symbolic value, does that leave India with the only choice to close the taps to the rivers? Vrinda Agarwal, Vion, New Delhi. So if it isn't a military option and the economic pressure doesn't count, then what can India do? There is high risk of a war over water in South Asia. The Indian Prime Minister met high-ranking officials yesterday and the Indian government now seems to be planning to take its share of the Indus River water. That's about 20%. If India does decide to take its share, it would deeply impact Pakistan, especially agriculture there. We've got our panel ready to debate that. In the studio with me, Andrew Marcel. He's the South Asia Bureau Chief for The Telegraph. Thanks, Andrew, for being here. We've also got Major General Khurana joining us to talk about if it indeed should be a military option and it, can it be one. And then we've got a uh, uh, Kashmiri journalist, Mr. Gilani, joining us. We should also have Aisha Siddika from Pakistan in just a bit. We're trying to connect to her. But let me take uh, this question first to uh, my friend from Kashmir, uh, senior journalist Gilani. Uh, thanks very much, sir, for being here. So if it is in this water treaty, what we're hearing from the Indian government now is that that 20% water can be used for the state of Jammu and Kashmir. Is that a move you would welcome? Uh, first of all, uh, thank you for inviting me for the, on the show. Uh, I don't think I'm the right person to answer this question because, you know, um, it is uh, New Delhi's call and it's between New Delhi and Islamabad. But as far as Indus Waters Treaty is concerned, I think it, it was signed in 1960 and it has survived three wars and also the Kargil. So I think, you know, uh, it also is in a way, uh, I think the PDP will be very unhappy if uh, such a move is being considered by Delhi because it, uh, you have to understand that all these three rivers flow through Kashmir. These are Kashmir's rivers and in the agenda of alliance that was agreed upon between the PDP and the BJP once they formed the alliance. Uh, there is also a, a talk in Kashmir and also a demand from Kashmiris that uh, the uh, right on these uh, the waters should be of Kashmiris. So there is also PDP has also promised its people. But, uh, Mr. Gilani, that's exactly what we're talking about. Campaign. This water, if yeah, yeah, India uses the 20%, it would be used by Jammu and Kashmir. So isn't that something that the Kashmiris want? No, no. I think uh, there is um, you have to, it, there's a deeper issue to it. You have to understand that Kashmiris believe that uh, India, New Delhi, used its waters. And it is, it, it is an injustice to the Kashmiri people. And they are likening it to uh, you know, what happened when the British was uh, ruling India. And it is being uh, likened to various other things. Even the Congress, senior Congress Minister Taj Mahyuddin has uh, made strong, uh, you know, reaction. Mr. Gilani, that and having I think said PDP that, also has, hmm. having understood, uh, we, we let's just for a moment, for the sake of the argument, say even if we understand that sentiment, the point here is that that water is actually going to Pakistan, and if it doesn't, it would be used by Kashmir. Let me just take that to uh, Andrew here. Andrew, you see very difficult relationships here, India, Pakistan. Kashmir and then of course the international world. In India the perception is the fact that a military option is not on the table is because India wants to appear as a, a good boy on the international stage. How is the international world perceiving what's happening here? I think that uh, India has 
has and will continue to uh, generate international goodwill by by uh, acting within international frameworks, by measuring its response, by, in a sense, turning the other cheek, as it were. Um, I think that that uh, you know, talk of a military uh, operation in response, um, although perhaps it would have been popular among some quarters domestically, mm. would have not played well on the international scene. Um, and I think we s we saw that at the at the UN uh, in the par over the past two weeks with India's very measured response. Um, and in terms of you know, a gesture including uh, the Indus River and, and the option of, of cutting off uh, what reducing water supplies. Well, I think it, you know it would be a it, it's symbolic that it's even being discussed. Hmm. Um, does India actually want to leave Pakistani people without water? Almost certainly not. But it's 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 demonstration that it has you know other other tactics available to it, which. Um, is uh, I think you know a a, a more as I say so a more measured it's, response. It's, it's a bit more like a scare tactic, but nobody really thinks that India is even going to go reduce water. And if it does decide to, would that be understandable by the international world, or even that's going to work? So if India does anything, it work, works against India. And Pakistan, uh, uh, the world admits, is a terror haven in many parts of it, and that doesn't disturb. I mean, I think that um, in many in many senses, ta just publicly having these talks, having Modi at these talks is very much India flexing its muscles, demonstrating that it okay. can do these things. But I think that you know, what's being discussed at the moment in terms of using more of the water from these three western rivers is entirely within the legal bounds of right. what is already in place. And that's the sort of thing which I think you know, perhaps India is doing with an, with an eye on the international community's response, saying, look, we're not, we're not suggesting we're going to break any international laws here. Right. We are operating within the bounds that have already been established. Let me go to General Kurana now. General Kurana, to withdraw the MFN status, as my colleague Vrinda Agrawal has reported, is more like a symbolic gesture. Military option uh, we're now being uh, we, we have been hearing is not on the table. And Indus, the waters, if we reduce that, then again we'll be seen as a people. Then India again would be seen. Uh, uh, to be reducing water supply to India, as Andrew here has said, perhaps it should just be a scare tactic. What do you think, General? Should the military option be on the table? Well, uh, let me first thank you for getting me on the program. I'm afraid I think we've got to take the whole picture collectively, comprehensively. Uh, we cannot say either or. I think when you're dealing the stick in a manner that it hurts and it delivers results. I think diplomatic end of the stick is being used and will continue to be used. Economic end will be continued to be used, but the time has come when the business end, which is the military option, has to be used. And I'm afraid. I just don't agree that the military option is not open. It's very much on the table. We don't have to be pushed into it. We will do so at the time of our choosing at the place of our choosing, at the mode of our choosing. What does that mean, General? What does that I mean, the place of, the of our choosing, the time of our choosing? I mean, uh, I'm sorry to interrupt you, sir, but I'd like to understand from you, what does that mean? Is that just rhetoric? Is that just a strong statement? Because what else would you expect the Indian Army to say at the moment? Yeah, let me say that's exactly what I'm trying to say, that it is not mere rhetoric. Rhetoric would be if we keep making noises and don't take any action. And when you take action, a military action is a well-conceived, well-planned, to be executed in a manner that it achieves its purpose. We don't speak from the rooftops what we're going to do. We don't, to be quite honest, talk on the television channels as how it is going to be done, whether it's overt, whether it's covert, whether it's the Air Force, whether it's the artillery, whether it's actually crossing the line, or whether it is raising some of their posts to the to the ground which are helping them to infiltrate people across. But I want to be quite clear. I don't know why we get an impression that military option is not on the table. Perhaps that's the impression which Pakistan has been carrying all these years, that India is not going to respond militarily till they do something to us, which is encourage them to do what they've done. And I want to make a very strong statement. I think Uri was not just a terrorist operation. I would call Uri uh, act of war. There were people who came from across the border or the line of control. They were equipped. 
they were trained they were funded and they were being guided by by some very well organized organization like the army or the si now that sure is not a terrorist section and therefore let's get that point clear that i am not talking about rhetoric i am talking about giving it back to them where it will hurt them but and general it's not, not rhetoric broadcast, you so, know from the rooftop and they so the point is it's not rhetoric if india does something but india does not it hasn't done in the past and if you look at the timeline of what happened after uri we heard strong statements then we heard about reducing water to uh, uh, pakistan in the uh, in this water treaty then we heard withdrawing the mfn stages we haven't really heard uh, uh, of uh, any sort of military action except for that uh, sound bite that's come from uh, the army headquarters um, andrew i like to bring you in here so india does not exercise a military option india should also not reduce water uh, supply to uh, pakistan india should also not uh, uh, withdraw the mfn status what should india do well i think that uh, mr modi's focus on uh, drawing pakistan into a, a competition based on development and reducing poverty is something that that does enable india to take the moral higher ground hmm. um obviously within an international context the idea of this being uh, a, an attack that pakistan as a state is behind is is far from proven and the bar for that would need to be very high indeed um but I, at the same time i think there is sympathy for india that it is dealing with attacks which are with you know we we can say that there is there's evidence pointing towards some of these people having come from, from across the border um obviously we don't have access to all of the intelligence that there's being involved there but i think that as i say there is sympathy but i think that india does continue to generate you know a lot of, a lot of goodwill by by focusing on being the acting like the major power in the region and not not a responsible power generating exactly. goodwill what does that mean does that mean that every time there's a terror attack india loses its soldiers we got to come back to that but i've got my pakistani guest now miss aisha siddiqui is joining us on the phone line uh, she's a political commentator and also uh, comments on pakistan's military miss siddiqui thanks very much uh, for speaking to me on i'd like to ask you uh what is the impression in pakistan and what is your analysis uh, to all of these options india is mulling whether it is withdrawing the mfn status or reducing the water supply under the indus water treaty ma'am well um you know the mfn status uh at this point in time uh there will be political the sorry there will be uh, people in this community who would be concerned But as it is, there's a lot of trade which goes on between the two countries in direction, uh, and the nature of business and industry is such that this is, you know, it is quite dependent on politics of the state. So I don't think that there is a lobby per se which is going to push the government and uh, draw the attention towards what's going to happen for the cost of conflict. I think it. in package as the larger cost of conflict but if you look at it you have the propaganda or you have what is being said uh, from the media uh, clearly uh, what the media is saying is that uh, you know when when india talks about cancelling the mfn status or stopping water uh, that it it a move uh to engage they know that being that is that being uh presented as atrocity or threat from india so the presentation to the public is very different uh i'm sure the business community which is interested in uh, you know in, in doing business with india would have different perceptions but if you you know if you talk about what the popular perception then it is basically it is questioning the people from from any effect that would happen and mr sidika what about the indus water treaty if india does take the 20% of water that it can take under the treaty how badly does that impact pakistan i think the understanding is that in the short term um it wouldn't be possible uh so there aren't those worries in the short term Hmm. and plus it's also a, a a matter which is covered under international law uh and in this water treaty uh it was not just between world bank uh, sorry not just between pakistan and india but it 
which was guaranteed by the World Bank. So there are a lot of things which will happen. Uh, a lot of things will set into motion once India does something about cancelling the Indian water. No, no, it's not about cancelling. Uh, what they're thinking what about is... is utilizing their share, the 20% that under the treaty they can. So if they do that, then how does it impact Pakistan? I think, well, it, it is going to impact. But I think uh, what Pakistan is trying to do now is draw international attention and saying the argument, look, the argument that we made here is that uh, to, the, to the public, uh, and I think that's important because how people react to it, will depend on the information that they are sent. And the information is, so far, that India is threatening Pakistan, uh, and in the entire discussion, there's a total disconnect with uh, terrorism. And the other thing which is being said is that, Uri, there is actually no clear-cut evidence to Pakistan. But ma'am, evidence has been provided today. The Foreign Secretary of India summoned, uh, I'm sorry to interrupt, but because you raised the point of evidence, uh, the Foreign Secretary of India did summon Pakistan's High Commissioner yesterday and then today. And then uh, today, full proof evidence is what we're learning has been given uh, as far as Pakistan's involvement in the Uri attack is concerned. They found the people uh, who were uh, who were sort of uh, paid for or uh, there was some sort of an understanding between living on this side and the chaps who'd come from uh, Muzaffarabad. So that evidence has been provided to Pakistan's High Commissioner today. I saw that. Listen, I saw that news too. But the point is that, uh, you know, uh, it's a reminder that nothing has happened on Mumbai as well. I mean, there's always this conversation gap. There's a lap as far as Mumbai, Patan Court, and, and, you know, all these concerns. Now there is this evidence, some evidence with Pakistan State does not get the amount to evidence you know, as, as far as, uh, you know, I'm referring to Mumbai. So my sense is that the same is going to happen. Uh, I mean, either, uh, you know, India would have to ratchet up uh, the threat. Uh, but let's see what kind of inter international attention traction does this matter get, uh, you know, for Pakistan to realize that there is a part to it. But it's an ongoing conversation at the moment. Right, Ms. Siddika. I mean, it's almost like we're talking about justice for uh, the 160 plus people who were killed in uh, Mumbai on 26 11. Then we're talking about Patan Court. Then we're talking about Gurdaspur. Now we're talking about Uri. Let me take that to my Kashmiri friend, journalist Mr. Gilani, is uh, joining us from Srinagar. Mr. Gilani, what do you think India should do? Oh. I mean, why, why should I tell you what India should do? I think uh, there's a strong perception. Why shouldn't you tell me what India should that do? That all this, you know, yeah, because this, this is not for me to decide. I think the strong perception in Kashmir today is that all this talk about diplomatic isolation of Pakistan, uh, repealing Indus Waters Treaty, and all this talk about OD and other things are an attempt to divert attention from the real crisis that Kashmir is. Uh, on average, 166 civilians are being injured on a daily basis since July 8. Uh, since the killing of Burhan Wani. And then, you know, you have 88 civilian killings at the hands of Indian security forces. There are more than 800 pellet injuries. And uh, Mr. Andrew was talking about high moral ground of India. I think uh, India actually was, uh, you know, uh, India invited a lot of international shame with what was being, ha what was happening in Kashmir and what still is happening And in what's Kashmir. your opinion on you Pakistan's it, you know? prime minister <clears throat> at UNGA no. saying that Burhan no, no, Wani please. was a local leader please. when he had an AK-47 in his hand? Wearing a soldier's attire and flaunting his uh, flaunting his gun. What do you I make of that? I think you have a Pakistani guest to uh, give you a Pakistan's perspective. I am from Srinagar. I will give you a Kashmiri perspective. I think you know you have to take this all this rhetorical utterances about diplomatic isolation and other things. I think the international relations are not driven by emotions and other things. They, you know, I, you, you, you should know. I mean, I think you, you must be knowing that in 1962, when Mr. Pakistan Gilani, I do apologize, but it seems China, to me China, that just, just, no, no, please, please. Go ahead, sir. Go ahead. Go ahead. Please, please let me let. Sure, me. sure, I'm, sure. I'm, yeah. In, in 1962, when Kashmir, uh, when Kashmir resolution was brought by, you know, uh, by Pakistan in, at the UN, 
China supported it, and Saudi Arabia, supposedly a Muslim country, they opposed it. So international re relations have their own dynamics. You know, when uh, India got closer to the US, there were Russians uh, conducted a joint military exercise with Pakistan. China supported Pakistan on Kashmir. So there's this I uh, diplomatic isolation does not exist anywhere in the world. You can build diplomatic pressure, but isolation, I think, is a wrong word to I, use. I, I do agree and with you. I, 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 I think, I'm sorry, uh, I've got four yeah. minutes left in this debate. I'm uh, sorry. I understand your point yeah. when you're talking about diplomatic the, isolation. The, Every the, country the, the has its national interest. <coughs> and their yeah. interest first, and that's how they decide. But, sir, I do find can it a I, little surprising it? that you did not talk at all yeah, about please. the Gurdaspur, Uri, Patan Kor attacks, where the soldiers have been dying. Of course, I mean, the fact I mean, that I mean, Kashmiris I mean, are getting injured is a problem, India, but also... India, no, I, I, I'm sorry, no, I've got to no, go to General India, Kurana. India, General India Kurana, come in. Indian Army is accused of war crimes in Kashmir. Rapes, yeah. molestations... General yeah, Kurana, I, I, would you like I, to say something? General Kurana would respond to you. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Look, yeah, let, 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 let's get one thing clear. There's a clear pattern Pakistan is following. That, that policy of thousand cuts on India to bleed is the policy. I think we're making too much of being a good boy in the international scene. This pattern is quite clear that it's supported by Pakistan, whether it's the ISI, whether it's the army. And therefore, this business of evidence being produced, you do that in Mumbai, nothing happens. You do it in Gurdaspur, nothing happens. You do it in Pathan Court, nothing happens. You do it in Udhampur, nothing happens. Now you start doing in Uri and nothing will happen. So I think the time has come when your military muscle, why do the countries have a security establishment? Why do you have such a large army? Why do you have such a large Air Force and Navy? Right, sir. It is meant to guard your interests. So I've I'm got to bring in my other guests. I think you raised a very important too, point. Andrew, last, last point for word from you there. Mm. And then I'll <laughs> go to Ms. Siddika if she's still with us. Uh, if we have our forces, as General Khurana is saying, you're constantly being attacked, you've constantly given evidence, that's what India says, mm. then what should now, what's, why should India not exercise the military option? Why should India be appearing as this uh, good boy and have the goodwill? India already has enough goodwill and Pakistan perhaps is misusing uh, uh, the fact that India won't opt for a military option. Well, I think that India and its government would uh, surely is thinking very much. You know, what are what are the outcomes that it wants from its response here? You know, a, a military response might be satisfying in some sort of punitive way, but ultimately, it it will cause harm to India on the international stage if, mm. if that's done, and it will provoke anti-Indian anti-Indian sentiment. So what happened in, when in the, the United region? States went into Abbottabad and in the uh, dark of the night just picked up and killed Osama bin Laden? What happened to their international image? Well, I, I think they were uh, massively less popular in certain parts of the world as a result of doing it. Um, <laughs> but no, the, of course, these things are never easy, and I'm glad I'm not the one making the decision. But uh, I think it's it's you know saying that uh, we have an army, why not use it? Sort of discounts the fact that actually. Hmm. Maybe, maybe the outcome that you want isn't something that's going to feel. Maybe in India, you know, in we just term. sit down in TV studios and discuss the several options, and uh, we uh, don't know which one Indian government is going to opt for, if it will. This government's uh, rhetoric has been pretty loud, so let's see what, in what way, they're going to react. So far, they say it's diplomatic isolation. Uh, my Kashmiri friend doesn't agree with it, but thanks very much, Aisha Siddika uh, from uh, Pakistan, from Islamabad, uh, Mr. Gilani from Kashmir, General Khurana, and Andrew Andrew.